Okay, let us now proceed to analysis of trusses. But by the way, what is a truss? So if a truss is composed of uh, members, and these members are now your top cord, we have your bottom cord, then we have the diagonals, and the web members, which are usually arranged in a triangular manner. So this is now your truss. So what are the assumptions of uh, in analyzing a truss? First, the members of a truss are joined together by means of pins. So we have pin at this joint, pin, pin, there is another pin, this one is another pin. Or more often, by riveting or welding the members to a common plate known as gasset plate. Second, loads are applied at the joints only. Okay, so the loads are applied at the joints. This is another joint if you want. If there is a load at this point, that is a joint of a truss. This is a joint of a truss. And this one is a joint of a truss. All members of the truss are two forced member. So let us try to consider member AB. If at joint A, your AB is in compression, then at joint B, your AB should also be in compression. However, your members may either be in compression or in tension. Compression, if the bar force is towards the joint, and tension if the bar force is going away from the joint. Now, we now have a, a zero force member. Now, when only two members form a non-collinear truss joint and no external load or support reaction is applied to the joint, then the members must be zero force member. Now, so if you try to take a look at joint G, joint G, so we have three forces in here, joint G, no load is applied at joint G, hence your FG is a zero force member. Another, when three members form a truss joint for which two of the members are collinear and the third forms an angle with the first two, then the non-collinear member is a zero force member, provided no external force or support reaction applied to that joint. The two collinear members carry equal loads. Okay, so wala dito sa truss na ito. However, one method of analyzing a truss is the method of joints. First, let us try to determine the reactions if necessary. Because there are cases that we can proceed immediately to a joint. Next, choose a joint of only two unknown members, then apply the equations of equilibrium which says summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero and summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. We only have to apply summation of forces is equal to zero because the bar forces are concurrent to that joint. Next is you have to proceed to another joint. Again, with only two unknown members and then apply again the two equations of equilibrium, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero, and summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. Next is you proceed again to another joint, again with only two unknown members, until all the bar forces are determined. Okay? Using the method of joints, determine the force in each member of the truss shown. 
So let us try to determine the bar force in member AB, in member AC, and in member AC, uh, BC. Now this truss is supported by a hinge at point B and by a roller at point C. So first, let us try to determine the slope of member AB and that of member and that of member AC. Let's try to determine the slope. Okay, so for member AB, so this is 9 and this is 12. Divide both by 4. So this will be 9 of uh, 3. 9 over 3 is 3. And 12 all over 3 is 4. That one is now 5. And then next in here is now 9 and 3.75. So if I'm going to multiply this one by 9 by 4 all over 3. Okay, so 9 by 4 all over 3. So 36. Divide this by 3 or that is equal to 12. And we now have 3.75. Multiply this by 4 all over 3, and this one is equal to 5. Hence, this is equal to 12, and this one is equal to 5. And this is therefore equal to the square root of. So we have, uh, so I have 12 square plus uh, 5 square. Of the square root of the answer, uh -huh. the square root of the answer, or that one is equal to 13. So that is equal to 13. Now, so the first procedure is to determine the reactions if necessary. Now, however, if you try to look at the stress, you can proceed immediately to a joint of only two unknown members. So at joint A, there are only two unknown members. We have member AB and member AC. So let's proceed at joint. So joint A, we now have your joint A. So this is your member AB. And we now have your member AC. And then we have the 945 pounds load in there. So this is your 945 pounds. Okay, so let us try to assume the bar force either in compression or in tension. So if, it we, uh, if the answer is negative, then the assumed direction is wrong. It should be in the other way around. So for bar AB, I'm going to assume this one to be in compression. So it is towards the joint. So this is now towards the joint. So this is now your member AB. And uh, your member AC, I will also going to assume this to be in compression. Hence, it is also towards the joint. So this is now your AC. Now, knowing the slope of this to be 3, 4, that is 5. And this one is 12, 5, and this is now 13. So let us try to take summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. So summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. 
we now have the horizontal component of ABS. AB multiply this one by 4 all over 5. Minus AC, the horizontal component is 5 all over 13. That is 5 all over 13. And this is equal to 0. So your AC is now equal to so your AC is now equal to AB so we have uh, 4 all over 5 so we now have your AB multiply this one by 13 all over 5. Multiply this one by 13 all over 5. So that AC is now equal to 2.08 AB. Next, let's try to get summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward forces positive. We have the vertical component of AB, so that is AB, this is now three over five. So it's going up, plus AC is going up, so that is 12 all over 13 minus 945 is equal to zero. 945 pounds is equal to zero. Hence, from equation one, so we have from equation one, AC is equal to 2.0. 8 AB. So we have AB multiply this one by 3 all over 5. Okay, plus AC is 2.08 AB multiply this one by 12 all over 13. And this is equal to 945. So we have 2.52, so that is 2.52 AB, okay, so you get this one AB plus I equal to 945. So your AB is equal to, so the value of AB is equal to 375 pounds. Now, since we get a positive value, then the direction of AB is correct. And therefore, this is towards the joint, hence, it is in compression. So let us try to substitute AB in equation 1. So substitute AB in equation 1. So your AC is equal to 2 point, that is equal to 2.08. Multiply this one by AB, which is 375. So your AC is now equal to, so the value of AC is equal to 780 pounds, 7 eight zero pounds. Again, we get a positive value. Hence, the assumed direction of AC is correct. That is again towards the joint. Therefore, it is in compression. Next, let us proceed now to another joint. So at this time, let us try to proceed to joint C. So at joint C. So 
joint C, we have now, so this your member AC. This is now your member BC. And we now have the reaction at C. This is a roller, hence the reaction is perpendicular to the application of the roller. So this is your joint C. Now, AC at joint A is in compression. Hence, AC at joint C is also in compression because this is a two-force member. So this is now your AC. AC is equal to 780 pounds. So we have your C vertical. This is the reaction of the roller at C. So that is C vertical. And therefore, I will going to assume member BC to be in tension. And this is now your BC. Now, this AC, the slope of AC is 12.5. And this is now 13. So summation. Summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. Then we now have minus BC minus a plus the horizontal component of AC. And the horizontal component of AC is 780 multiply this one by 5 all over 13 and this one is equal to 0 so your BC is now equal to 300 pounds again we get a positive value hence the assumed direction is correct and this is going away from the joint and therefore that is in tension Okay, next, determine the force, the bar force in each member of the truss show. Again, your truss is supported by a hinge at point E and by a roller at point F. <coughs> now, so this is equal to 3 and that one is 2.25, 3 and 2.25 so let's try to get the slope of this also the slope of this one in here so that we now have so that we have uh, 2.25 let's try to multiply this one by 4 all over 3 and this one is equal to 3 and we have 3 Multiply this one by 4 all over 3, and this one is equal to 4. So this is equal to 3, this one is 4, and that one is 5. Similarly, 3, 4, and that one is 5. Next, let us try to determine the reactions of the hinge support at E. So we have the hinge support at E and the roller support at F. So this joint, so we have your, so this is a hinge, so we have a horizontal and vertical reaction. Okay, so I'm just going to place it directly on the figure. So we have your EH. And this is now your E vertical. And this one in here is now your F vertical. So that is the reaction at point F. Now, let us try to determine the value of the reaction using 
summation of moment about point F. So if you try to take summation of moment about point F is equal to zero. So let us try to consider counterclockwise moment positive. So we're getting moment about this point F. So if is going counterclockwise, so we have E multiply this one by the moment arm, which is equal to 3. Then minus 900, multiply this one by 2.25. Minus 900, multiply this one by 4.5. And this is equal to zero. Hence, your EV is now equal to 20-25 newtons with a positive value. So, the direction of EV is going downward. Next, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. To the right forces positive. So minus EH plus 900 plus 900 is equal to zero. So the value of EH is equal to 1800 newtons. So it is going to the left. Next is let us try to take. Summation of moment about T e is equal to zero, counterclockwise moment positive. So FB, multiply this one by three, minus 900, multiply this one by 2.25, minus 900. Multiply this one by 4.5, and that one is equal to 0. Hence, the value of FB is equal to 20, 25 newtons. So that is going upward. Now, by inspection... at uh, joint by inspection at joint B. So at joint B, there are two non-collinear members. And uh, this joint is not loaded by any force. Hence, member AB and member BD are zero. Okay, so AB is equal to zero and BD is equal to zero or you can just simply go at that point so or so if you try to look at joint B okay so for this one you try to verify your zero force member so the first one is two non-collinear members and no load is applied to the joint then the uh, bar forces in the two members are zero. Or so if you try to go to joint B, so this is now your joint B. So we have your joint B. So if I'm going, this is now your AB, and this is now your BB. So if you try to take summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero, hence AB is equal to zero. And summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, hence your BD is equal to zero. Now, let us now proceed to a joint where there are only or two unknown members.
Now, if you try to look at joint A, we know AB already, which is equal to 0, and we know BD, which is also equal to 0. So the only unknown bar forces are AD and AC. Now, let us proceed at joint A. That is now joint A. So we have So this is your 900 newtons. So we now have the two unknown members. Okay, so R, now your member AC, and your member AD. So I'm going to assume AC to be going away from the joint, so that is intention. And now we're going to assume, so this is your bar AC, and assume going towards AD, towards the joint, so it is in compression, that is now your AD. So your BC in here, uh, your AD in here is now equal to zero. Now we have the slope of member AD is 3, 4, 5. So this is now 3, 4, and that one is 5. Let us try to take summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0. So summation of forces horizontal is equal to 0 to the right forces positive. So we have 900 minus AD. So the horizontal component of AD is 4 over 5. AD 4 all over 5. So that one is equal to 0. Hence, the bar force in member AD is equal to 1125 newtons. So that's 11. 25 newtons. We get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct, and therefore that is in compression. Next, summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward forces positive. So minus AC, okay, plus the vertical component of AD is 3 over 5. And this is equal to zero. So your AC transpose that to the other side of the equation is now equal to AD, which is 1125. Multiply this one by 3 over 5. So your AC is now equal to 1125 by 3 over 5 is 675. Newtons, that is positive, hence the direction of AC is correct, and that is in tension. Now, we are through with AC and AD. Through with AC and AD. Now, let us now proceed to another joint. So this time, I would like to choose. So if you try to proceed at joint D, so we have... Okay, next, let us now proceed at joint D. So at joint D, there are only two unknown forces, 
One is CD and the other one is DF. We know already AD and we know BD. So at joint B, this is now your joint D. So we have uh, this member and we have the other member. Okay, so we have uh, your BD equal to zero. So your AD is in compression and therefore it will also be in compression at joint D. So this is now your AD. And your AD is equal to where is AD? 11.25 newtons. That is 11.25 newtons. Now, are you going to assume Member CD to be in tension, so that is your CD, and member DF to be in compression. That is also your, that is now your DF. So this look of uh, member AD is uh, three, four, and that is five. Now. If I'm going to take summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. Upward forces positive. So DF, okay, BD is zero. The vertical component of AD is going downward. So that is minus 11. 25, multiply this one by 3, all over 5. And this is equal to 0. So the value of DF is now equal to 675 newtons. Again, we get a positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct. That is towards the joint. And uh, this is therefore in compression. Next, summation of forces, vertical, uh, horizontal at this time. Summation of forces, horizontal, is equal to zero to the right forces, positive. Okay, C is going to the left, so that is minus C, D. So the horizontal component of AD is going to the right, so plus AD, which is 11.25, Multiply this one by 4 over 5. So that's 4 all over 5. And that one is equal to 0. Hence, the value of CD is equal to 900 newtons. So we get a positive value. The assumed direction is correct. And therefore, this one is in tension. Okay, so we have uh, member DF. We know now member DF. We also know now member CD. Now, I will now proceed at joint F. So at joint F, there are only two unknown members. So we have CF and EF. We know already DF. So at joint F, so we have your joint F,
Okay, so at joint F, so we have BF is in compression. So this is your DF, and this is equal to 675 newtons. This is now your E or F vertical, and F vertical is 20, 25 newtons. It's 20, 25 newtons. So we now have your EF. Okay, so this is now your EF. So I'm going to assume EF to be in tension. So this is your EF. And the CF to be, your CF to be in compression. So that is now your CF. Now, the slope of CF is... Three, four, so this is now the slope. So that is uh, three, four, and that one is five. So that is now your CF. Now, summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. So we have summation of forces vertical, zero, upward forces positive. So the vertical component of CF is going down. So CF multiply this by 3 all over 5. Minus DF 675 plus FD 2025 is equal to 0. Hence, the value of CF is now equal to 2250 newtons, and this is in compression. Again, we get a positive value. Next, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. Minus EF. The horizontal component of CF is going to the right, plus CF, multiply this one by 4 all over 5, and this is equal to 0. So your EF minus EF plus CF, 2250 by 4 all over 5 is equal to 0. So we now have your EF is now equal to 1800 newtons. And that is in tension. We get passive value, hence the assumed direction is correct. N next, let's, I will now go in. So we know already this one, and we know already your EF. So let us proceed at joint E. So joint E. So the only unknown forces at joint E is now the last member, which is now CE. So we have, this is at joint E, So we have your E vertical, and this, your E vertical 
is equal to 20, 25 newtons. So your E horizontal, that is your E horizontal. And this one is now equal to 18, 0, 0 newtons. And your EF, so this is your EF in tension, that is your joint F, which is also equal to EF is 18, 0, 0 newtons. Hence, the only unknown force in here is now your okay, EC or CE. Let us try to take summation of forces vertical. Summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward forces positive. So CE minus 2025 is equal to zero. So your CE is equal to 2025. Your positive value, hence the assumed direction is correct. And that one is in tension. So you may now tabulate the results. For each member, you have compression and you have tension. Determine the force in each member of the thrust loaded as shown. Now all members are 3 meters long. So now, if you try to look at the truss, all members are three meters long. So if this is three, that one is three, this one in here is three meters. Hence, this triangle CDE is an equilateral triangle. Your triangle CBE is also an equilateral triangle. BEF, also an equilateral triangle. And the ABF, also an equilateral triangle triangle. Hence, the uh, interior angles are all 60 degrees. So that one is 60. Okay, so that one is 60 degrees. This one in here is 60 degrees. Similarly, with triangle BCE, BEF, and ABF. So first, let us try to get AH horizontal. Summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. That is considering the whole thrust as free body diagram. So we now have your AH is now equal to zero because the thrust is not subjected to any horizontal loading. Now, let's start now at joint D. So I will going to start at joint D. D. So joint D we have this is your joint D. Okay, so this is now your CD. So we have, I will assume this CD to be in tension. And then we now have your DE. So DE to be in compression. This is your DE. Now we have the 3 kilo newton load at this point. So that is your 3 kilo newton. Okay, so this is equal to 60 degrees. We have 60 degrees. Now, summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. Upward forces positive. 
So the vertical component of the E is BE sine of 60 degrees. And then minus 3 is equal to 0. So your DE therefore is 3 over sine of 60 degrees or this is equal to 3.464 kilonewtons. Again, we get a positive value. The di assume direction is correct. And that one is in compression. Next, summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So minus CD, okay, plus the horizontal component of the E, cosine of 60 degrees is equal to zero. So your CD plus DE is 3.464, 3.464 cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 0. Hence, the value of CD is equal to 1.732 kilonewtons. In a positive value, therefore, this is in tension. So, we know now the bar force in member C, D, and member D, E. So let us now proceed at joint C. So at joint C, there are only two unknown members, B, C, and C, E. We already know your C, D. At joint C. Now, at joint C, so we now have uh, the FBD at joint C. So we have the 5. This is now your CD, which is in tension, 1.732. So we have your BC. So your BC, assume that in compression, which is making an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. So this one in here is 60 degrees. Okay, so if you try to prolong that one, that is also equal to 60 degrees. And your CE is now making an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. Now, summation of forces horizontal. Summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So we have your BC, the horizontal component of BC, BC cosine of 60 degrees, minus CE, minus CE cosine of 60 degrees, plus CD, plus CD, and CD is 1.732, and that one is equal to zero. So we have 0 0.5 BC minus 0 0.5 CE plus 1.732 is equal to 0. So let us call that one as equation 1. Then summation of forces vertical is equal to 0. Upward forces positive. So your BC is going up. So BC sine of 60 degrees plus CE sine of 60 degrees minus 5 is equal to 0. So we have 0. 866 BC plus 0.866 CE minus 5 is equal to 0. So this is now 
equation 2. So let us try to solve 1 and 2 simultaneously. Okay, so equation 1 and 2 simultaneously. So equation 1, let us try to multiply this by 0 0.866. So, 0 0.866 by 0 0.5 is 0 0.433 BC minus 0 0.433 CE plus 1.732 by 0 0.866 is 1.5 that is equal to 0. So we have equation 2. Let's multiply this by 0 0.5. So we have 0 0.433 BC plus 0 0.433 CE minus okay so we have minus 5 by 0.5 so that is 2.5 is equal to 0 so let us try to add the two equation so that this is now equal to 0 0.866 bc Okay, so it's zero. So this is minus one. So minus one is equal to zero. So BC is now equal to one over 0.866. Or that is equal to 1.155 kilonewtons. Again, we get a positive value for BC, therefore, this is in compression. The assumed direction is correct. This time, let us try to substitute. Okay, substitute BC in either equation 1 or equation 2. In either 1 or 2. So, in equation 1, so, 0 0.5, multiply this one by BC as 1.155 minus 0 0.5 CE plus 1.732 is equal to 0. Hence, the value of CE is now equal to 4.619 4.619 kilo newtons we get a positive value therefore the assumed direction is correct and that one is in compression so we know now uh, BC and we know now your CE So at joint E, this is now your joint E. We know already DE, which is 3.464 in compression. <coughs> your CE, 4.619, also in compression. So we now have your BE. Assume that to be in tension. And your EF to be in compression. CE is 60 degrees with, that is 60 degrees with BE. So this one is 60 degrees. And also EF is 60 degrees. 60 and that one is 60. It's 60 degrees with the horizontal. So your EF 
is 60 degrees with the horizontal. So this one is also equal to 60 degrees. Now, let us try to take summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward forces positive. So the vertical component of EF is EF sine of 60 degrees. This is included in the horizontal. So EF is sine. And then we have minus, minus CE is downward. CE is 4.619. Sine of <coughs> minus four point six one nine sine of sixty degrees. <coughs> minus DE and DE is three point four six four. <coughs> so your DE is 60 degrees with <coughs> the horizontal. So this is DE is 60 degrees with the horizontal. Okay, so that is 60 and therefore that one is 60 degrees. So we have sine of 60 degrees is equal to zero. So that the value of EF is now equal to 8.083 kilonewtons. We have a positive value, hence EF is in compression. <coughs> Next, Summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. To the right forces positive. So we have BE minus BE plus CE. The horizontal component of CE is 4.619 multiply this one by cosine of 60 degrees. Now, the horizontal component of the is going to the left. So, minus minus BE and BE is 3.464 so that is cosine of 60 degrees. And the horizontal component of EF is going to the right. So plus, we have EF that is cosine of 60 degrees. That is cosine of 60 degrees. And this one is equal to zero. <coughs> so we have transpose BE to the other side.